So next up, well, oh golly, it's it's me and and my my good friend, my good colleague Jeremy Anderson. Uh, we're going to be talking about how big is the Sakai tent. So I'm going to try to get our presentations presentation up and running. Uh, let's see, Wilma, is it one of these, or did it not get uploaded? Oh, I don't think I uploaded yours. I put oh. it in the. Um, oh, okay, so what we I need put to it do in the screen then. Yeah, we can do that. It's in the shared Google Drive. I thought that That's was all right. I don't. All you I don't needed. need to. I don't need to do that. That's fine. So hang on just a second here. Paul says you're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Paul. <laughs> So Martin, let me ask, want, I'll, I'll be glad to screen? keep time for you. I can I can be monstrous too. Yeah. Okay. Are you seeing the screen? Yes. Okay. Very good. So I want to introduce my my colleague and friend Jeremy Anderson. We're here to talk about the the Sakai tent. In other words, who's in Sakai? Who's in the Sakai community? And we we maintain that it, we're reaching beyond the the boundaries of higher education. So. First, um, Jeremy's going to tell you a little bit about what the LAMP Consortium is, because it's probably important to know that before we dig into this. So, Jeremy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can, uh, can you hear me? Yep. All right. Excellent. Hey, it's nice to meet everybody. Uh, so we get a great opportunity through the LAMP Learning Consortium to uh, really take Sakai outside the area of academics while we have academic partners uh, as a part of our consortium. Uh, we also reach out to various other areas as well. So the LAMP Learning Consortium, as you can see, we're, we're just a group of community of users from academic to a non-academic uh, setting. As, as Dr. Chuck has already kind of indicated, uh, you know, we're, we're providing the best technology for teaching and learning. So we're able to do that uh, through the consortium. And, and not only do we provide um, Sakai, so we have other features that are available as well. Of course, Big Blue Button is in our instance of Sakai. Uh, Warpwire, Turnitin, uh, ePortfolio integrations, uh, even badging, and then instructional design services. And we just pull all that together, and uh, we work 30-plus uh, organizations uh, and within our consortium to be able to make it affordable. So I think Martin kind of can uh, go to the next slide to kind of talk about what that affordability price uh, looks like. So one of the things about the LAMP Learning Consortium is that we have membership levels uh, all the way from individual to what we would consider an enterprise uh, membership. So a small uh, commitment, a minimum commitment as little as three months, um, and that would be $150 uh, for those three months, $50 a month, all the way up to an enterprise uh, a commitment of one year, uh, up to 250 user accounts. Uh, for $4,800 in a 12-month time frame. So, and we encourage a lot of our users to start small and continue to grow um, their organization. Uh, a couple features that I want to highlight here, you'll notice these subscription levels are based upon um, user accounts, active user accounts. Um, the other thing is with the number of courses that they're able to have on the platform and then the ability to be able to customize branding while we are one instance of sakai uh, we have uh, the multi-tenant capability of, of branding uh, for our users and some of those are, are extremely important for our various organizations and then we also provide support uh, so we have level one and level two support our level two support is with our partners at long site grateful for them and the work that they do as well so we're able to support um, what we would consider the number one LMS uh, in, for our, our particular users. So th that's the basic uh, of LAMP, and, uh, but we're going to demonstrate some, some ways that we're using it outside of the, the non-academic uh, area. So Martin, Jeremy, wanna... before I move on to the next slide, um, yeah. let me just say, because I, I'm realizing who we're talking to here, many of you will say 250 users, that's nothing. Um, we, we certainly have members who go well beyond that. And so um, the, the ability to have additional, um, we, we call them blocks of user accounts beyond the enterprise level is, is also part of that. But it's, it, it, we just, we, we have found that having these uh, multiple levels of membership really help people say, oh, I could afford that. And, and then once they've sort of gotten their feet wet and, and go, I really like this, then they start growing and, and 
and and they really like what they see. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Okay, Great so assessment. what what we thought we'd do is give you all some examples of the kinds of uh, what we call non-academic educators. In other words, these are not colleges and universities. These are not higher ed that we would talk about. And so the first one is the National Dance Education Organization. They're based in Silver Spring, Maryland. Um, and if you are a dance instructor in the U.S., you are likely a member of NDEO. And uh, if you are um, wanting to get uh, sort of further education, you probably are going to be uh, subscribing to the Online Professional Development Institute, or OPDI as they call it, which is a rich Sakai-based curriculum um, that teaches all kinds of courses. They have courses in pedagogy of dance, teaching methods, history of dance, assessments, um, how to do research and so forth and so on. They're just lots and lots of courses and they're all done in Sakai. And uh, interestingly enough, um, a couple of years ago, we started helping them with what they call Delta, which is their dance entry level teacher assessment. It's basically that certificate that says, I know what I'm talking about and I um, am, am ready to actually teach dance uh, this would be in the U.S. So this was a high stakes certification exam um, and they, you know, they, they, they did it in Sakai. Um, and so that's just an example. Here's another one. Um, the Cordoma Foundation. I had not heard of Cordoma before, uh, but it's a rare brain cancer. And so there's there's a foundation devoted to the, the, the treatment and cure of Cordoma. And so they're using Sakai as basically a place to keep all their uh, research notes to collaborate, so doesn't have anything to do with classes. The closest they come to classes is they have what they call patient navigators. So they pair a newly diagnosed person with Cordoma with a patient navigator who's going to help them walk through this disease. And so they train their patient navigators also using Sakai. So completely different way of, of using Sakai um, than what you perhaps might be used to. Um, Jeremy? Yeah. I'm talking a lot. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, you're, you're okay. And of course, the, the, the previous two slides that we've talked about, th those are not-for-profit organizations. And uh, so, you know, Sakai can be used in the academic realm, uh, the not-for-profit, and then on the uh, for-profit side. So Sodexo, uh, those that are here uh, at universities, you may be familiar with Sodexo. Sodexo, they may supply your food service uh, there on your campus, but they have an internship program. And so through their internship program, they're using Sakai to instruct their interns to be able to collaborate with them. Uh, they have to do assignments. Um, they have document resources uh, that are there and many more. So, you know, from the nonprofit to a for-profit, um, we're seeing this use uh, of Sakai. And then uh, another uh, organization we have, uh, the Cadet um, group, they, they're training medical office managers on effective Medicare billing. So these are a couple of attorneys uh, that uh, we also uh, work with and, and they're, they're dealing in the area of Medicare and billing and coverage. And so they've taken Sakai and training um, those in that field how to, how to manage that. Um, and so we're seeing that on a regular basis as well. And they have assignments they have to do, turn back in for feedback. Uh, and then they also uh, use it for uh, continuing education uh, as well. So another unique uh, way that it's being done. And I'm just realizing because I'm a monster looking at the time that, you know, we need to, we, we have more that we can talk about. I mean, we, we have a, a group that focuses on people who have uh, dropped out of high school and helping them get a college experience. Many of them get their GED and go on to college. Um, we could talk about um, the Breathing Association. I mentioned them earlier this morning. Yeah, uh, so I was going to mention that. So some people were able to see how that was done inside Sakai. Very, very unique. Yeah. Um, and, and we have one that has to do with low income housing. And we have another one that has has to do with um, uh, helping K-12 schools uh, and, and just on and on. But the thing that we really wanted to get to was we'd like your input as to what um, what kinds of organizations might need Sakai, even though they don't know it yet. So here you are on this call, and we thought this would be a good chance to engage you a little bit to think about um, what, what kinds of organizations uh, can you think of that are outside of the, what we would call the mainstream, that could still use Sakai. Help us think about that. Type something in the chat. Um, and, th and then um, if you actually know somebody, We'd love to talk to them because we feel like we we want to expand the size of the Sakai tent so that um, 
more and more people begin to understand the value of Sakai and, and we can broaden the, the reach that we have as a, as a Sakai community. You know, one of the things, Martin, you bring up that about expanding the reach. We would love for, for those people to be a part of the Sakai Virtual Conference. They have some unique uh, aspects uh, in their teaching and learning that are that are valuable uh, to contribute to, to Sakai. So uh, let us know. You can, uh, we'll, we'll post an email in the chat. Uh, you can reference that to anyone and tell them to, to shoot us an email. We'd yeah. love to have an opportunity. We, to, we would love to talk to, to more people. So. All right, I'll, I'm giving myself the hook here and saying we're done.